I'm Scott Allen Miller, this is Sam IT, and this is where we talk about the cross-section of IT and business, and today we're going to be doing part of our Basics of IT series. We're going to be talking about what is a LAN, or a local area network. What actually is this? So a local area network is important, and we use this as a very common thing that we say all the time, but people often lack a really clear idea of what it is. So a local area network refers to the series of computers and, com and interconnect technologies, switches and hubs and routers and so forth that exist all connected through technologies that are able to work uh, very quickly at very high bandwidth in a relatively close area. Now, this has become obscured a little bit because some of the technologies that we use in LANs traditionally really did have major limitations. They often couldn't go over, say, about 100 meters, and even that was often quite far. Some of them were much shorter. But as fiber technologies have started to roll out even in LAN areas, Sometimes we're able to get kilometers out of LAN technology. So this definition of a LAN has become muddied a little bit. And so we treat it slightly differently. Originally, we really used this definition to refer carefully to those technologies that were uh, able to be used, that we were able to deploy ourselves and would connect within a single building or a very tightly grouped um, set of buildings, right? So a campus sometimes is referred to by its own terms, uh, but in general, we, we really look at these as a LAN. And we think of LANs uh, as being a single set of networking that is controlled by a single company. In practical terms, what we mean by a local area network is a network that is controlled by a single entity and is not bounded uh, or, or is bounded, I'm sorry, by a barrier of WAN technologies. But this then requires kind of a recursive uh, definition that gets a little bit difficult. So WAN technologies are the wide area network are the technologies used to build, for example, the internet uh, and are used for long distance uh, connections between between um, you know, different municipalities, between different regions of a city, from one building to somewhere down the street, and so forth. We can generally think of these as one being things that happen within a single piece of property, and one as being something that happens between properties. One is operated by uh, an end user, one is operated by an ISP, an internet service provider. However, in the past, we didn't have internet service providers when these first uh, these technologies first came up, but often the current internet providers were the ones who did that, such as AT&T. In the old days, wide area connections uh, were actually uh, pre-internet. They didn't carry internet protocol. They had other protocols that they used, and this made it a lot more obvious. Over time, as internet protocol has become ubiquitous, which of course at this point has been for so long that it's hard to believe that a lot of these concepts predate it, but a lot of these concepts do predate it. Uh, and so, um, what were strict definitions based on technology items in the past, but even then it was a little bit confusing because of course legally you could go acquire the same technology that was used for going, for example, between different municipalities and you could deploy it within your own office uh, campus if you wanted. And then would it then become a wide area network or a local area network? The definitions, even when they originally came out, were slightly ambiguous because they were trying to define something uh, that they didn't have a really strict concept on and still don't. But we generally accept that LAN barriers are when we have a network we control, and this is pretty straightforward. It is the things after our the demarcation point of our internet service provider, and the wide area networks are things that are provided by an internet service provider or its equivalent that we pay to provide a connection between different locations. Uh, and so, and then those things together would be our own wide area network, right? Multiple LANs that are hooked together. This is one of those topics that it seems so simple and so obvious. What is your local area network? Seriously, do we even have to have a definition of that? Do we have to describe this? Do we have to talk about it? But we do because it's actually rather ambiguous and people start to do things like use WAN technology, hook LANs together, and then refer to them all as a LAN. But actually, that's all a WAN. And in some cases, none of it makes any sense at all. In the modern world, we really don't care about LANs in the way that we did 30 years ago, back when they were the primary means of viewing technology. Today, they matter because it refers to 
you know, the speeds and technologies that we're able to manage with our switches and routers. So here in my office, for example, I have a series of switches and that is my LAN, the things that sit behind my router. The router could easily be included in my LAN, of course, but that is it. It's behind my firewall, it's behind my router, those switches, my wireless access points, all those things, that is my LAN. But of course, those same wireless access points could, if you put the right antenna on them, connect to buildings many buildings away, even a few blocks away without too much of a problem. Well, then do they become a WAN? The technology has not changed at all. In fact, it's the same connection. What if I had fiber to my desktop instead of copper and I decided to roll it out to a friend's house a kilometer away? Is it then a WAN or is it still part of my LAN? On the technology side, if you were looking at it through a LAN scanner, a tool to scan my local area network, it would see it as being connected as part of my LAN. It would have no way to detect that it was far away. That's a little bit confusing when clearly physically you look at it and it is far away. So we end up with a human definition based on the way that networks are physically distributed. And then we have a technology definition that is based on how they appear when we look at them through a network. And as we move to IPv6 and we start to have more and more public addresses rather than uh, network address translation ones, and this is getting into future topics, but if we have network address translation, it becomes very obvious that you have network ad address translation at that LAN to WAN barrier. But if you don't have those like you do with IPv6, or as you don't have them with IPv6, I mean, uh, then that indicator of barrier starts to go away and it becomes confusing again and things start to become very muddled. And the reality is it is muddled. But just like cloud means something very different than most people use it to mean, LAN has some strict definitions, but we have ways to use it in a practical sense. And so in that practical sense, our LAN, when we're talking in uh, one frame of reference is all of the computers and networking equipment that is within a single location that is separated by a WAN interface. And the second that is still useful is the set of all of the technologies and communications, the, the computers and, and printers and switches and so forth that are connected to a peer like they exist behind a single interface. And I'll give that example is if in the first example, we're, we're talking about like everything that's physically within a single building or campus, uh, and they all network together and they share an internet connection to the outside world, if they even have a connection, right? You can have a LAN without an internet connection at all, then it's all just your LAN. And that's how it started, right? Originally, LANs were just isolated pools, and then WAN technologies allowed one isolated LAN to talk to another isolated LAN. And that was the concept, right? Isolated LANs talking to each other. Of course, there was a time when it was, we had actually had WAN technology before we had LAN technology. It was isolated computers talking to other isolated computers over WAN technology. Later, LANs were added uh, to allow computers that were sitting next to each other to talk at very high speeds at very low cost without having to pay an outside provider for a long distance connection. Because if you're paying an ISP, an AT&T, a Comcast, a Verizon, someone like that, you have to pay for them to manage all those lines, all that equipment on the outside world. Uh, but when you have inside stuff, you just hook up a switch, plug your computers into it, that's yours, you, you control those costs. So that happened long ago, but that was an important impetus to these things changing. So when we're looking at it from that perspective, it's very easy to physically view and say, okay, this is the barriers of the physical space. But when you're looking logically, so that's the physical definition, the logical definition where it's all the things that exist within an apparent LAN involves all the things that we connect together using different technologies to appear like they're sitting next to each other. So for example, if you have a computer that has a map drive and it's able to access an, a map drive, or it's able to provide that to another computer who wants to use your map drive, whether that computer's on the, on the table next to you or on the floor below or across town or on the other side of the world, if it looks like it's sitting next to you, to your computer, if it acts like it's sitting right there, then that is considered your LAN in the logical sense. Those are the logical LAN and the physical LAN are the two reasonable ways to use the terminology today. And uh, knowing what your LAN is and which one you're talking about is super important for being able to have conversations that then go forward about why we use or used to use or don't want to use LANs as a secure security barrier. And of course, you can tell from just the, the lack of clear definition how risky it would be to try to use that as a security barrier. And yet it is it remains a decade after it has been standard to say you can't do that, that most businesses still treat their LAN as a security mechanism rather than a uh, technology interconnect solution. And, uh, but we, we need that clear definition. We need this understanding of what it is so that we can move forward with saying, does that make sense? 
as a secure security barrier? How should we look at it? How should we look at interconnects? What kind of risks do they bring? And so forth. So thank you for joining me. We're going to be doing more and more of basics of IT to help make this very com complicated and large field easier to understand. There is a real lack of this kind of information out there. Uh, we'll be talking about VPNs coming up soon and their interconnects between different companies and uh, how that uh, plays into security concerns and how lands are defeated by that and many other technologies. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'll see you next time.